Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey everyone, happy Sunday, and I hope you guys are doing good today. So I wanted to come on here and talk about this viral story. A lot of people have been discussing this. This story has now gone international. And I see a lot of divide on this story. I see the right-left divide. I see the political divide about, you know, self-defense and, you know, citizens being able to defend themselves against criminals and thugs. Then there's also the racial divide, you know, the blacks versus the Latinos and things like that. But um, I want to come at this story from a more spiritual angle because this is the vibe that I pick up from the story. To me, it's not so black and white, no pun intended. And I think there's a lot of nuances to this story. And there's a lot of things that people may not be noticing or looking at when it comes to the death of this young man in NYC. So the story that I'm talking about is concerning the NYC bodega worker. His name is Jose Alba. And basically, um, it was a situation that went down on July 1st. This woman came into the store with her daughter, and she was using the EBT card, and she was going out her way to, you know, swipe the card. She was trying to buy chips for her daughter, and the EBT card was not working. And so, you know, she kind of told Jose, well, you need to try again. Make sure you run it under food and not cash. And Jose, you know, agreed, and he tried it again. And it still did not work. And at that point, she got pissed off. She got belligerent. Um, she started going off on him. She even yells that he disrespected the daughter and snatched the chips out of her hands. But I have watched this video I don't know how many times. I did not see in any instance in this video where the man snatched chips out this little girl's hand. Okay? She then proceeds to call her boyfriend, um you know, to come and confront Jose Alba because she feels like she's disrespected. And then that is where the story turns. The man walks into the store, very hostile, gets in the 61-year-old worker's face, puts hands on him, slams him against the wall, really, you know, puts hands on this man, and this man is obviously scared for his life. He ends up grabbing a knife, and he ends up stabbing this man, Austin Simon, to death. So the situation is crazy. Uh, the police end up coming to the bodega and they end up arresting the bodega worker. And a lot of people are seeing this as self-defense. A lot of people are really upset. So he ends up going to Rikers Island for over a week. Um, the family tries to start a GoFundMe to help bail him out because his bail was like $250,000. They start a GoFundMe. GoFundMe ends up taking it down. So this causes even more controversy and the story goes even more viral. So due to pressure from the media, from the public, the judge ends up lowering his bail to 50000 and he was able to be bailed out yesterday. So I want you guys to go ahead and watch this story, watch these video clips, and I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. New information on a deadly bodega stabbing in Hamilton Heights overnight. Police have now charged a store worker who killed an irate man during a dispute. The suspect is 51-year-old Jose Alba. Investigators say he stabbed 37-year-old Austin Simon twice in the chest and once in the neck. Simon apparently went to the store angry that his girlfriend said Alba was rude to her. Eyewitness News spoke to a woman who lives above the bodega. Um, it's sad. I don't know that it's surprising, but it's sad um, that, you know, you start a fight over nothing. Literally, you go to the store, even you know, if somebody was rude, you just leave. Don't come back. People in the neighborhood say the worker and the man who was killed may have argued before. Bodega worker Jose Alba is home tonight after spending six days on Rikers Island. He hit his face and had nothing to say about his self-defense case. His saga started Friday night while at work at the Blue Moon Bodega in Hamilton Heights. This woman seen on surveillance video getting mad after she's denied a bag of chips because her EBT card is not working. Her boyfriend comes in, confronting Alba behind the register, 
pushing the 61-year-old. Alba's attorney says the video speaks for itself. And Alba stabbed 37-year-old Austin Simon in self-defense, resulting in his death. Police arrested Alba, charging him with murder. But the mayor is on Alba's side. My heart goes out for that hard-working, honest New Yorker that was doing his job in his place of business, where a person came in and went behind the counter and attacked him. And my heart goes out to that, uh, that uh, employee who was in the store doing his job. And so I am hoping that we take all of that into consideration. After Alba's cash bond was set at a hefty $500,000, a judge agreed to lower his bail to $50,000. And the district attorney said his office's investigation is ongoing with another court appearance July 20th. I signed it for him to come out. President of the Bodega Owner Association, Francisco Marte, financially helped his release and says Bodega owners have a dangerous job and need more than the mayor on their side. Mr. Alba's state of mind. Well, he, he, you know, he's very distraught with, uh, with everything that's happened. It's a man that worked 13 hours a day for to make his living and then suddenly see him involved in this incident that he didn't provoke. And there was a GoFundMe page set up for Mr. Alba's legal defense in this matter. GoFundMe took down that page saying that they do not allow fundraising for legal defense of a violent crime and all donors have been refunded. All right, so you guys just saw the story. So you guys see he's clearly out now. Um, he's out on bail. But this story really disturbed my spirit. One I always talk about on this channel is people being agents of chaos. And one thing that I want you guys to recognize as my tea sippers is that you have to be aware that there are many agents of chaos that are brought into our lives. Sometimes it's friends, sometimes it's family, but sometimes it's the people that you're sleeping with. And the vibe that I get from this woman is not only was she an agent of chaos, but she also has a narcissistic Jezebel spirit in her. OK, and anyone who's under the influence of a narcissistic Jezebel spirit has the capacity to destroy your life. And this is the case. And this is what happened to Mr. Austin Simon. Let me go ahead and break that down to you. But in Bible days, narcissism was considered the Jezebel spirit. And what a lot of people don't understand is that narcissistic behavior is not OK. And, you know, while a lot of it tends not to be too serious, they're aggravating, they're annoying, they're people that you can simply, for the most part, dismiss. But every now and then, narcissists can get you into big trouble, even causing you to lose your life. Because the sad thing when it comes to narcissists, people need to understand that narcissistic people are people who have chosen to behave recklessly to get whatever they want in life. Nothing that they do is ever wrong in their brains, the way that their brains are wired. These are really dangerous people. And once you are aware that somebody is a narcissist, it is best to cut all ties with them and exit stage left. No explanation needed. Once I realized that there was a narc in my life, cut them off, move the hell on. A lot of these people to me are simply demonic. I don't know how else to, you know, word it. These spirits that they have in them lead them to, them to lie with conviction, no shame, and will lie in such a grandiose way as to make other people believe their lie. It's very scary. On top of that, many of them are, are overly proud, overly arrogant, selfish, deceptive, malicious, envious, jealous, so you have to watch out for these type of people. And that is the vibe that I get from this woman. One of the top spirits behind narcissism, one of the ways that you can see that is that there's an insanity with some of these people. Um, the purpose is to make you feel like you're the crazy one. What this woman did is she knew she didn't have enough money on her EBT card because this is a game that some people play. And I've seen this play out in real life where Somebody may not have enough money in their bank account, and if they make a big enough scene, they can make that person behind the register so uncomfortable that they'll just give them the item for free because they don't want the headache. They don't want to be bothered. 
So let me make a big scene. Let me curse and, you know, accuse them of racism and all this stuff. So that way I can get away with what I'm trying to get away with, which was a bag of fucking chips. That's why she was snapping because she felt like it's just a bag of chips. It's a little girl who wants some chips. You might as well just give my daughter the chips. That is what she's thinking. So she's trying to make the man behind the register feel crazy, like you're doing all this behind some chips. You're not running it right. I know I have money on my card. EBT cards are not that difficult. Either the money is there or the money is not there. If it is not working, it is because there is not enough funds on that card. Okay? Another thing that they'll do is that they will twist words. This is a lying spirit And they use your words against you and they will turn around and shift the blame on you. In the new updated video that came out, and I'm going to show that to you guys, the woman is clearly lying and saying that the man snatched the chips from the little girl. But when you watch the video, he never snatched anything from this child. But she's saying it so other people can get involved in her fuck shit. And she's trying to hype it up so that way when she goes to go get her man, the man is thinking that the child was also, you know, in the line of fire from this Clark. And that was not true. So she's purposely lying and trying to shift the blame and make the Bodega Clark feel like he's going crazy, like he disrespected them, like he did something to the little girl when none of this took place. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Put it on the Yeah. Put it on the Did you put food? Did you put food? I'm going to pull it in front of you and I'm going to let you hear that okay, it's going mama, let me do it for another time. Oh, my God. Money only. Whatever you. Hard work, but swipe whatever you want. That's not working or working. That's not working now. Oh, you have the. I think you have. I think you. Oh, you heard this? That's not my fault. You're not working. That's not my fault. You're not working. Can I get in my free? The machine is working. The, the, the car is working. What the? Oh, Papa, look, come on, come out. Zero, Papa. Come on, come out, Papa. What's up with you? I don't want to promo, Papa. Uh, What's wrong with you? I know two and a half. Why you snatching anything out here? Baby! He's coming here. He's coming here. No, it doesn't matter. No, it doesn't matter. Right. 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 Another thing that they love to do is blame, condemnation, and accusations. They want you to think that they are the true victims, and that is what she did. This whole situation was because her card was not working, and instead of her taking ownership and personal responsibility or use another form of payment, She wants to blame the clerk and make him feel like he did something wrong, like it's his machine, and that's why they're in the situation that they're in. Their chaos that they cause, they do that to cause confusion to the point where it leaves you dumbfounded, where you're just like, I don't even know what the hell happened. I was literally trying to run her card. It didn't go through, and she just blew up. Again, 
These people are agents of chaos. Another trait is selfishness. They want to be the center of attention and they want to have full control. So this situation went from being about an EBT card and a bag of chips, but now I need to be the center of attention. I need everybody to know that I'm the victim. I was disrespected and it wasn't my fault. Another thing that these people who had the spirit of narcissism in them, they love to over-exaggerate. These people are the kings and queens of exaggeration. They blow the smallest things out of proportions to make mountains out of molehills because once again, they have to be right. And in order for me to look like I'm right, I had to make the situation 10 times worse, 10 times more grandiose than what it really is. Because again, it leads back to that sense of importance and that sense of getting attention by any means necessary. They also love to move in the spirit of anger and rage, which again is linked to selfishness. Another thing is that they're never satisfied. They're easily bored. So when you're an agent of chaos and you're operating in that chaotic spirit, you create drama because you're bored. You're not satisfied with your own life. So now I need to bring chaos and destruction to other people. They're also extremely prideful, and a lot of them feel like they're above reproach. This woman was extremely prideful because her card wasn't working. She didn't want to hear anything that the Clark had to say. She felt like she was beyond reproach. Her card should work because she says it should work. And for you to say that it's not working, you're disrespecting me because I am above reproach. They're also addicted to attention, and they love to mock other people to provoke a reaction. This woman did all of these things that I just mentioned. Once she started all of this drama, this whole ball that got this situation rolling, she then went to mocking him and lying on him, saying, don't snatch that out my daughter, you fucking piece of shit. Even though this man took nothing from the daughter. Then she proceeds to say, I'm going to bring my nigga down here and he's going to fuck you up. My nigga is going to come down here right now and fuck you up. So once again, mocking him, telling him that he's weak and her man is strong and her man is going to put hands on him and fuck him up. So again, this woman created all of this chaos, all of this drama that changed the trajectory of these two men's lives. And if you guys don't see the spiritual implications of this entire story, I don't know what to tell y'all. This story is bigger than left and right. It's bigger than, you know, Latino and black. This is a spiritual story. If you really break this down, this is a spiritual battle that we're out here facing. A lot of people are going crazy. The energy's off with a lot of people. And the spirit of narcissism, the Jezebel spirit, is out here ripe in a lot of people. And you have to be aware of this. She literally hyped her boyfriend up to the detriment where he lost his life. This man went in there not thinking anything, thinking because he's younger, he's about that life, that this old man wouldn't really react in that way. He never saw this coming. He ran in there, he put hands on this man, and when the man reacted in self-defense by stabbing him, he laid there on the bodega for bleeding. But what's even worse is that this woman, this same Jezebel, that started all of this, do you guys understand that she pulled out a knife out of her own purse and also stabbed the store owner? I don't think a lot of people even know that. This man was in Rikers Island dealing with wounds that were infected. And the only thing he could do with his wounds was put hot water on them. No, no, I said in the jail. In the jail. Uh, there's no much that I can say, you know, he just, um, at least he, you know, he's home now. Mm -hmm. And he's getting, you know, he feels better. So he's, he's weak because he got, hurt, he got his injury, he got injuries. Um, and he's getting recovered because he, they, they didn't take care of that. He was like infected. He was cleaning his hot water only. That was the only thing that only he had there. So he was cleaning his armor. He was stabbed. No, no, no. I said in the jail. In the jail. Yeah, they, he, they didn't give him that much attention. Got it. How many times was he stabbed? Like three, three, four times, I believe. And who stabbed him? Okay. I, I got, I got, I still, I don't think we went for some details, but the lawyer told me not to, 
you know what to say. How is he doing? Oh, he's doing okay. He's doing okay. You know, I feel better that he's at home. Um, but he's in pain. You know. mm -hmm. And so the, 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 the injuries like this, he's open. I can see his uh, injury are Look, oh it's open, look. Wow. So this woman who created all this chaos also stabbed the bodega owner twice. Another thing that I found very disturbing about the situation is the fact that if you see what this young man is wearing, and I say young man just because he's younger than the bodega uh, store owner, but he's definitely old enough to know better. The man comes marching in an in a Amiri shirt. For y'all who don't understand, Amiri is a high-end luxury brand. Now, some people are saying this could be a knockoff. Even, I doubt it is. Let's just say, for the sake of this video, it's not a knockoff. Amiri shirts start at $300 on up. So you mean to tell me this man can walk into a bodega wearing a $300 shirt and he ends up losing his life over a dollar bag of chips? And the crazy thing is that Amiri was trending for two days straight on Twitter. Imagine how much money and more attention they got from this story. Imagine how many people went out and bought Amiri shirts just because of this story. So once again, this man is dead. In the morgue, the clothing line that he represented, they're getting attention, free press, and money. And this worker, this bodega store worker who had, you know, who did not ask for any of this, he was simply doing his job, sat in Rikers Island for damn near 10 days. You can't make this mess up. Now, what's even more interesting is that his family is now speaking out. And they're defending him, of course, you know, because that's their family member. And they're saying that the Bodega Clark, what he did was overkill. So let me go ahead and read to you guys what the family is saying. Mr. Austin was a devoted family man and a father to his nine children. Let that sink in. This was a father of nine. He's not the monster that they're trying to make him seem like, said ex-wife Tyena32, who did not want her last name used to protect herself from public outcry over the case. Everyone is judging him on a video clip. Simon was killed July 1st when he confronted Alba over a bag of chips that his girlfriend had tried to buy for their daughter, the, for her daughter. The girlfriend said Alba snatched the snack from the 10-year-old daughter's hand, according to the criminal complaint. So Taina goes on to say, personally, I don't feel like it was self-defense. She said he was stabbed multiple times. That was overkill. Self-defense for a push. You got pushed. You're sitting there going back and forth with words. He's just trying to make him apologize to the little girl. Tyena said that she and her ex had grown up together and had known each other since they were children. She said their split was simply the result of drifting apart and that Simon cared about each of his nine children. Honestly, he was a great person, she said. And when he loves people, he loves them hard. Alba posted bond Thursday after prosecutors requested, requested a lower bail package. He was initially held on $250,000 cash bail after he was charged with the knifing death. Taina also goes on to say he was more concerned that Alba had snatched chips from the little girl, said Denisha Simon, 24, who is Simon's niece. You don't do people like that. People really don't understand the real story. Everyone is saying it's over a bag of chips. He died the way he went through life. You don't disrespect women or children. Simon's cousin, Cassandra Simon, lays the blame for the fight at the feet of Simon's girlfriend. What happened to my cousin and Alba started with her. After not being able to pay for whatever with her card, she went and got my cousin involved. Relatives said that Simon had a rough upbringing, but overcame it and became a devoted father and family man. He had a past, said Sandra, said Sandra Simon. Everyone has a past, and that doesn't mean he deserved to die like that. She also noted that there had been tension between the Dominican and black communities in the neighborhood that, that played out as part of the conflict as well. No one will talk about the tension between the black and brown community in Harlem and how Delhi owners at times disrespect the men and women who grew up in those communities. 
He was wrong for going behind the counter. Sandra Simon added, Alba was wrong for treating the little girl disrespectfully. So that is what his family had to say. And again, to me, the family, they're dead wrong because the new footage has come out where you can hear the audio, and he said nothing to the little girl. He said nothing disrespectful to the little girl. He didn't snatch the chips out of her hand. And when he was talking to the woman, she escalated by going off and cursing and carrying on. And what a lot of people, whatever energy you give them is the same energy they're going to give you back. That's just the way the world works. You know, so the spirit of narcissism was right with this case. The excuses that the family is making is silly. Um, of course, his criminal record is being blasted on the Internet. Um, they're saying that Mr. Simon had prior arrest, including for robbery and assault and served time in state prison in 2016. Um, and he was convicted for assaulting a police officer. So if he had no qualms with assaulting a police officer so much so that they gave him so much so that he got time behind that assault. Of course, he had no qualms running behind a counter and attacking a bodega clerk. So, again, this is why as people we have to move smarter and we need to understand the context and the nuances before getting emotionally invested. Um, while it's unfortunate that this man died, he put himself in that situation. One, you never go behind the counter. You don't know what lies behind there. You don't know if they have knives, if they have guns. At that point, when you are behind the counter, I don't care if it's McDonald's or a bodega, you are purposely invading their space. A counter is there for a reason. It is a divide and a protection mechanism between the customer and the store worker. And when you go back there, all bets are off. You know, and the fact that this woman created all of this chaos behind a bag of chips and her boyfriend lost his life is just insane. And for when I read in that article, that wasn't even his daughter. So you as a father of nine, you have nine biological children out here. And instead of thinking about those nine children and the fact that you need to be there to watch them grow up, you done got froggy and leaped to protect somebody else's child. And now you've lost your life, and now this is nine children who are now going to grow up without a father. But I just find the whole situation just really disturbing. And I just think that from a spiritual aspect, people need to really reevaluate those in their lives, people who they share their spaces with. Because, again, especially in this day and age and with everything that's going on out here, a lot of people, male, female, it does not matter, are basically agents of chaos moving with the narcissistic Jezebel spirit. And you have to know how to look out for that and cut that off and keep it pushing because these people can lead you to your demise and to your death. And this is a perfect case of that. So on that note, I want you guys to leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on everything with this story. How do you guys feel about this? Um, do you feel like the bodega worker was in the wrong? Do you feel like it was self-defense? How do you feel about what the family has to say about Austin Simon? Um, and then also, do you agree with me that this woman basically caused all of this chaos and that she's the reason why her man acted and went off the way that he did because of, you know, what she started, because of the drama and the nonsense that she started over a bag of chips? Again, if he can afford to wear a $300 Amiri shirt, he should be able to afford a bag of chips. What a real man would have done in that situation, in my personal opinion, was, okay, baby, you don't got it. She wants some chips. Don't even worry about it. You know, he's on, he's on one. He's acting funny. Here goes $10. Here goes some money. Here, here goes 5 bucks. Go get her the chips. That's what a real man would have done. A real man does not protect their family by running behind the counter and attacking somebody who's working. A real man thinks, like, yo, I'm a father to not only my girlfriend's daughter, but to nine other children. So I need to make the right moves to be here to live another day to see my kids. That's what a real man does. A real man provides financially. If a situation like this arises where her EBT card is not working, as a real man, he would have broke her off some money. So that way she could go buy what she needed. So his moves and what he did was not protecting her, was not protecting that child. That was nothing but ego. 
He was showing off to a Jezebel spirit. He was showing off to a narcissist who hyped him up. That is not what it is to protect your family. That is not what it is to protect the child. A real father and a real man would do the right thing to make sure that they're there to see their children grow up. So on that note, I'm done. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this entire story. Make sure you hit the like button. Please share the video. And most importantly, make sure that you are still subscribed to the channel because YouTube loves to unsubscribe people from my channel. So on that note, you guys, have a happy Sunday, and I'll talk to y'all later. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us in tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.